All right, so for this portion of the video, you're going to, uh, for this portion of the tutorial, you're going to be using uh, GitHub. So this is a pretty much an introductory uh, kind of look at how GitHub is used in, say, a workplace when working with a team or to communicate with other developers. GitHub is very important. The way I use GitHub is I use GitHub Desktop, which is why we've got this open right here. So make sure you have this downloaded, make sure you have a GitHub account, and we're going to open our GitHub desktop app. When you open it for the first time, it should look like this. I have repositories, I've removed them for the purpose of this video. But what we're going to do is we are going to create a repository inside our assets folder so that we can upload our code to GitHub so that I can help you uh, with any incorrect coding that you've done. So, what we're going to do is we're going to create a new repository on your hard drive here. Uh, sign in if you haven't, so I'm going to do that real quick. So you go to File, Options, and then you Sign In. Alright, once you've signed in, uh, you'll be able to see any repositories that you might have created previously, or if you haven't, then you'll see the screen that we had before. What we're going to do is we're going to create a new repository on your hard drive now that we have signed in. Uh, and this repository should be duplicated or cloned in the cloud uh, in the GitHub servers when you upload it. And that's what this program does. It manages your repositories on your hard drive so you can clone them, uh, which means that you can create copies on multiple different devices, cloning you can come on brain you can do this you can create branches so if you want to follow one line of thinking that could potentially destroy all the code that you've just written and you want to keep a copy separate you can create a branch and branches are very very useful when you want to take a detour in what you're doing if you want to get sidetracked for a little bit so if you decide to create a script that could potentially hurt your repository in this game, if you want to create some kind of weird explosive script that is going to break every other script and rewrite them all, you can create that in a branch and not worry about them all being deleted because you'll know that you have the main existing branch and everything working before you ever tried to make that happen. That's the best explanation of branches I can give. Uh, then you can merge your branches, which is where you bring the working code from one part of your branch back into the main, or you can merge two branches uh, to form together. There's a lot you can do, but we're not going to be getting into the more advanced stuff until much, much later when we are working on all the other stuff that could potentially go wrong. Uh, right now, we're just going to create this new repository. So, our repository's name is uh, probably going to be, let's say, uh, Metroidvania, because that's what we're creating, right? And I'm going to go uh, that's a reasonable description. Initializing this repository with a readme, uh, if you do this, then in your description and in your readme file that it will generate, that you can edit inside of Visual Studio or Atom if you decided to download that, this will tell me what exactly you're trying to do with your project or give me a better understanding of what you're trying to do. So if you're trying to do something a little bit different to what I am, and that's fine, then make sure you include a description of what you're doing if you ever need any help, make sure you have a readme to, uh, for me, make it readme nifty or readme josh, uh, that'll be really helpful. Anyway, I'm going to choose a place to save this on my hard drive and we're going to put this inside. So I have my tutorial attempt three uh, here in my personal folder. So I'm just going to go in here. And I'm going to go to assets and that's where we're going to stop. So rather than create a scripts folder, because scripts is not a very good repository name, if that makes sense, you don't want to create a repository called scripts. 
that's that's just the amount of scripts that you will potentially write in your coding lifetime is huge so calling one folder scripts is going to be really bad you want to create a well titled folder for you to put all your uh, code in so yeah we're going to save it under assets and it should just sit there and this will be your scripts folder so we've got it inside our game uh, project files and inside our assets folder so we can access it from the editor and that's all good git ignore leave that as none license leave that as none you don't need to uh, look at any of these so we're just going to go create repository right so right away uh, there's nothing in our repository and we can publish the folder so we can tell uh, github that we have a folder that exists called metroidvania and we can publish this to our github account so if you want to do that i'm going to you can publish this repository now there's a little checkbox here that says keep this code private if you actually want help and you want me to look at it don't uh don't leave this checked uh uncheck it which means that the code can be public and that you can share it with people uh you can edit your description again if you need to so now we're going to click publish repository this will send it to the cloud you're all good to go and it looks like we're done so we can minimize uh metroidvania there we go and we're going to shut this as well now uh you'll notice that unity just did a thing it had one of those little dialog boxes come up so go over to your assets uh under your project go to your assets folder and you'll see that there is a folder here called metroidvania and it has a readme file in it deja vu huh if you click on the readme uh you can see what it says so 8-bit metroidvania for people to learn off of that's what i put in my description you'll notice some similarity uh, this is the project name and this is the description of the project so far so good what we're going to do now is we're going to create a script it's going to be a really simple script uh just to show you that this stuff can all actually be sent to the cloud so we're going to go create c sharp script did i mention that you need to right click to bring this up you should know that by now c sharp script i'm going to call this hello world hello world is a rite of passage when it comes to coding the first thing that any uni professor or coding tutor online will try and get you to do when you write a script for the first time is say hello world we're going to press enter and this will create a file called hello world.cs cs as in c sharp or the coding language we're going to be coding in we are going to double click to open this and this should open visual studio if you have it installed i'm using visual studio 2019 it's just as easy to use visual studio 2017 there's nothing wrong with that after a short wait or in my case a long wait you'll be presented with the first lines of code you see whenever you open any scripts in unity there's a lot to kind of unpack here and i don't have much time right now to do it so to begin with at the top of the script we have some definitions on what this script needs to be able to run inside the unity engine uh, it uses using system.collections using system.collections.generic and using unity engine there isn't much to explain about that it's using a bunch of system uh, operators system definitions that we want to include in our scripts these are just all pretty generic for unity uh, pardon the uh, pun and then it's using the unity engine which uh, as you're coding unity will check whether what you're writing in your script is correct down here if you have the same layout as me you'll get errors currently we've got nothing really written so we have no errors no warnings either warnings are different from errors where errors is something that will actually go wrong warnings are just telling you that you're not doing things the way you potentially should be so uh, now we can actually move on to kind of the meat of the script we have public class hello colon 
mono behavior, uh, hello world colon mono behavior. And then we've got start is called, update is called. These are explanations of what these are. These are functions. The start function, as it says here, is called before the first frame update. We don't need that for this current script, but we are going to use it in the future. So remember it, but goodbye. Update is called once per frame. That means that the update function is called dependent on your system's processing speed or the refresh rate of your monitor. If you're running at 30 FPS, then this will run 30 times in a second. If you're running at 60 FPS, you're running at 60 times per second. Once again, we're not interested in you, so goodbye. What do we have at the top here? Public class. Now, a class is a certain type of object. Unity uses a series of object-oriented uh, programming features, I guess you could call them. So one of them is every script is a class, usually. You have the public class hello world, uh, which is derivative from the type mono behavior. Mono behavior has a definition that we're not going to look at right now. The point is, this is something that this can derive from. Mono behavior will have a bunch of functions that we can use. Specifically, it'll have things like update and all that kind of thing. I guess what I'm saying is that for right now, you don't really need to understand what mono behavior does. Uh, all you need to know is that this hello world part right here needs to always be named exactly what you've called your script, minus the .cs at the end of it. Uh, since we've made an edit, we can press save. So, first thing we're going to do is we're going to write a really, really quick line of, well, a couple of lines of code. So, if we're writing hello world, uh, what we want to do to make sure that our scripts are working and linked up with everything, we're going to go back here and open up the console real quick. Uh, welcome to the console, by the way. This is the most annoying part of Unity. Uh, I think most people can agree. You have your console here. It's not, there's not much going on right now. You know, we've got no messages and no warnings, nothing, uh, which you can toggle on and off over here. We have absolutely nothing we can clear, and etc. We want to make a message appear in our console to check that Unity is working. So we're going to go back over to Visual Studio. And I slightly lied about the start function. We're going to bring that back real quick. So we're going to write void start. Make sure that's capitalized. And then we're going to go open bracket, open curled bracket. Uh, what do you call that? Round bracket, closed round bracket. And then we're going to do these squiggly brackets. Uh, the squiggly brackets are the start and end of your function. So anything within these is what your function is going to do. Anything in these round brackets is what your function needs to perform things. So uh, really, really quickly, we can, we're just going to make sure that it's working so far. So we are going to write print, uh, which is a function that is going to print text inside the console. Uh, we're going to tell it what to print. So we're going to do this. We're going to tell it that it's going to print a string of characters. It knows it's a string because of these quotation marks. And we are going to type the words, hello world. And then every single line is going to end with a semicolon. You're going to get sick of them. Don't forget semicolons. Uh, that's how the world breaks. We're going to press save. This so far should run. So we're going to jump back into Unity itself. And you'll notice I've got my inspector here, which has selected the hello world uh, script. You can see our code. And you'll notice in our console that there is nothing. There's no message, so we failed drastically. Except, remember what function did we put the code in? We put it in void start. So, we need to start our game. Uh, make sure that maximize on play is off. We're going to start our game. And I realized I have done something very, very and horribly wrong. We're going to stop our game. 
we didn't actually tell our script to do anything because it's not in the scene. So that's just a silly mistake. So we're going to go to our player object. He's not going to keep this script for long, but we're going to close our anim. We're going to minimize our animator. We're going to add component and we're going to go hello world. You'll notice that there's a space uh, down here for some reason. Unity has some really nice features where if you name your variables in a certain naming scheme, it's very, ha uh, the, the engine is very happy to convert that into regular people speak. It has functionality to do that. So where there's no name in the script, there is down here. So we're going to add our hello world script. Then we're going to try again. We're going to open our console, but you'll already notice that right down here is a little, it's a little bubble with an exclamation mark and next to it, it says, hello world. Now, obviously the way I did this, there's, there's multiple ways you can do it, but this is one of the easier ones. Uh, the one that we are actually going to use more frequently in this series to check that things are working is we are going to use debug.log. And this is exactly the same as print, except debug.log is Unity specific. It works with everything in Unity, whereas the print function uh, will only work if mono behavior is the inherited class. Uh, in other words, if there's a, if after hello world you have semicolon mono behavior, uh, sorry, colon mono behavior, then print will work. But if you don't, it derives if the class derives from something else then the print function will not work because it won't know what you mean. You haven't given it good instructions. We're going to press play again. And look at that. We've got hello world. So thank you guys for watching. Appreciate all of you. I noticed my first video was uh, pretty popular and lots of people thought it was a good idea. So I appreciate uh, all the support with that. Hopefully this kind of picks the series back up a little bit more uh, now that we're going into the coding of it and actually getting the Metroidvania made. We've done a lot of the work to begin with, so it's, it's going to feel good to actually uh, get some movement going in the next couple of episodes. Uh, yeah, I said last episode that this episode was going to be a, a movement one, and I was wrong about that. I realized I needed to kind of introduce some of the coding aspects of Unity really quickly. Thank you guys so much for watching. Appreciate every single one of you and uh, bye-bye.